We have all this technology. Boy, isn't that a, a blessing and a curse at the same time, isn't it? And we can't be parted from our smartphones uh, today. But folks, this is the smart book. This is the timeless book. It doesn't matter what technology does. The character and nature of man has never changed. We are the same. We are the same. And this book speaks to us honestly about every situation that we encounter. It does not mention internet pornography. But it does mention the exact same thing in the culture of the day that it was written. So it applies to our culture today just like it applies uh, to that culture in history. Amen? And to know it, and to, to know the history of it, to know everything about it, is so very important to us. I, I want to give you this, I, I didn't put it on the screen, but I want to give you this simple acrostic, light, and, and, and mention these words to you. When you study your Bible, let the L remind you of the literal principle of biblical interpretation. In simple terms, we are to interpret the Word of God as we interpret other forms of communication in its most obvious and literal sense. Why do we have to make it say something else? If you want to say that the Bible promotes homosexual uh, lifestyle, then you're changing the words of the Bible. You're not understanding it in its most literal sense. We need to stay with its most literal and obvious sense. The I stands for the illumination of Scripture that can only come from the Spirit of God. You can know every word in this book, and you can quote every word in this book, but without the Spirit's illumination, it will do you no good. You have to have the Spirit to help you to apply it, to help you to understand it totally in your life. Uh, and the G, G stands for the need to look at it in the typical rules of grammar. Uh, including syn syntax and style, but also including the context. Don't take little verses out of the Bible that illustrate a point that you want to make and take them out of context to try to make your point, no matter how good your point is. I've seen pastors do that, as well as, as ordinary Christians, and pastors are only ordinary Christians anyway, but, <laughs> but I've seen folks do that, and it always, always leads to error in the end. Take it in context. So. And then... The H reminds us that, that our Christian faith is historical and evidential. Uh, it, the biblical text is best understood when one is familiar with the culture and the times. It's not limited to the cultures and the times when it was written, but we are, are best able to understand the scripture when we do understand the culture and the times uh, in which it was written. And the T in light stands for the total harmony, the total harmony of the word of God. What it says in one book, it, it supports in all the other books. You understand what I'm saying? If you want to understand the Word of God, don't take a single passage out of context and say, this is what I am to believe about this subject. Compare it to the total Word of God. Amen? It is the total Word of God that will give you the context for the message of God that He has for you. So remember to light your experience as you study the Word of God. Uh, that we are to study, accurately dividing the word of truth. We're to be plugged in. We're to have regular communication with God. If you're not spending a regular time with God, I admonish you to begin that. And don't let Satan defeat you. Because I know how it goes. Because it went this way for me for a long time. I'd have two or three days where I'd be real diligent. And I would, maybe four or five days. Maybe sometimes a whole week. And, and I'd be in my Bible, quiet time, every morning. And I'd be feeling real good about myself. And something would happen. It always does. Something would happen, and I'd have to lose a day, or I'd lose two. And you know, and every time that happened, Satan would say in my heart, well, you loser, you loser. And I used to listen to that. I used to agree with him. Yeah, I am a loser. I can't even stay every day in my word, in the word with God. Until I realized that God was just as happy to see me after a day that I missed, after a week that I missed, as he was if I had continued. God was just as happy to, to speak to me uh, no matter what. And when I got right back to my quiet time and when I quit listening to the voice of God, when I began to do it regularly, 
even if I had a, a lapse now and then, then I received from God the things that he had for me. Uh, I, could, I can't do anything perfectly. Can you? <laughs> now, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I'll straighten the pictures in the doctor's office just like some of you. <laughs> you know, I just can't sit there as long as they make you sit there without getting that picture straight. <laughs> It'll bug me to death. But I don't do anything perfectly. And I, I don't even read my Bible perfectly all the time. But that's not what God's looking for. He knows I'm imperfect. Amen? He knows you're imperfect. He just wants us to be consistently in his word. Regularly studying. Regularly plugged in to God. Sometimes it's... It, if you are lacking the full power, maybe you need to have clear contact. You know, if the contact gets dirty, uh, there are, are things that, that, that don't happen. And even as a, as a Christian who is plugged in, as a Christian who's trying to live for, for their life for God, there are little things that happen. Or maybe not so little. Sometimes there are sins. You know, sometimes there are people who cut you off, and it's not your fault that you get angry. Is it? <laughs> there are those little sins that you need to confess before God too. Keep that contact clear. Keep it pure. Uh, in Colossians 3, 1 through 3, it says, Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And sometimes that's just a worry that, that clouds that contact between us and God. All different kinds of things can cloud that or can, can make that contact not be clear. We need to make sure we have a clear contact with God. And, and then finally, we need to be engaged in a purpose. What good is an engine that runs? What good is you have the, if you have the voltage meter that goes all the way over uh, like it should if you don't go anywhere? Right? You get in your car, you start it up. Yep, voltage meter looks good. Turn it off, go back in the house. Doesn't make any sense, does it? Why do you have a car if you're not going to drive it? Right? Uh, you know, we have it for a purpose. God wants to put his power in our life for a purpose, for a reason. He wants to engage our mind. He wants to engage our soul. He, he wants us to be engaged and moving forward to what he has called us to do. Uh, Philippians 2, 1 through 4 says, Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look on your own personal interests, but also on the interests of others. And if, you are, if you're doing what that scripture says, you have a purpose in your life. You have action to perform. You have ministry to accomplish. Uh, I wrote my newsletter article, you may have gotten the newsletter, about how April showers bring May flowers, Right? And I believe some of the flowers that I have seen as people in our church have gone through the showers, the difficult times, the storms of life, some of the flowers that I have seen have been the gracious acts of God's people, giving them transportation to the doctor, taking them meals into their homes, ministering to them in love like this passage, looking after their interests, not just their own, but looking after other people's interests as well. Those have been the flowers that I've seen from the showers that have been happening in our church lately. Haven't we had a lot of things to pray for lately? A lot of people going through difficult times. But folks, that's what a family's for, is to love people through those times. And the greatest purpose we have as a church is to express the love of God in people's lives. Amen? The greatest purpose you can have as an individual Christian is to look at the interest of other people and love them like Christ loved them. Isn't that how Jesus said they, they would know that we are his disciples if we have love one to another? Amen? And we are called to love one another. And that love has to be expressed. You have to engage. 
You have to do something if you're going to show love. Because love that is hypothetical is exactly that. It's love without feet. It's love without hands. And you're a hypocrite if you say you love and you never do anything about that love. Amen? Now, I didn't get a very strong amen on that one. <laughs> I was, that was pretty poor, folks. <laughs> Uh, it is really true. You're a hypocrite if you say you have love and you never do any loving acts. Amen? Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. That's the word of God. And other people will see Jesus best in us. We'll see the power of Jesus living in us. And in, when we engage in what he wants us to do, using the power that he gives us to accomplish the purpose of that he has for our lives. Amen? That's what he's called us to do. So let's, let's look at that voltage meter one more time. Where is it setting in your life? Is it setting over here on zero? No voltage at all? Because you're not connected with Jesus? You've never asked Jesus to come into your heart to forgive you of your sins? Never asked Jesus to come into your heart to empower your life? You've never asked Jesus to come into your heart to give you purpose and meaning in life? If it's setting on zero, I have good news for you. Jesus is just ready. If you will open your mind, if you will allow your heart to receive him, he stands at your heart's door, knocking, wanting entrance into your life. Good news is, he died so that you can have life. Are we Christians running under full power or low power? For the very reasons that we discussed. Maybe there's sin in our life. Maybe there's things that, that even as Christians that we need to let go of. That we need to let God have. Cast our burden upon Him. And let Him take His yoke. Maybe we need purpose in our lives. To live under the full power of of the Holy Spirit that indwells us. He has given us that power. Are we going to live in that power? Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. Lord, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to know you, to experience the power that you want to give to us. I pray, Lord, that you convict us of exactly where we are today so that we can get it right with you. Lord, if we're Christians... Lord, I pray that, that we would live under the full power of your Holy Spirit's leading and guiding, that we would stay connected to your word, stay connected to you, understanding each day what your marching orders are. Lord, for those who might not know you to this morning, I pray, Lord, that they would want to be connected to you, that they'd want uh, to have your power in their lives, that, that you would open their minds and open their hearts and open their lives to what your spirit is saying to them this morning. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory, Lord, for what you're doing. And Lord, thank you for this time that we can look at our voltage gauge, at, at charging our mind with the things of God. And I pray, Lord, that we would seek to do that this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Together. God has given us the opportunity this morning to make sure that we have the power of God living in our life. Amen? So if God's spoken to you, why don't you come as we, as we sing, and I'd be glad to pray with you about what God has said in your heart.